A very warm welcome to you all to Rokeley Parish Church's online service on this Mothering Sunday. It's really great to have you all with us as we come together to worship and praise the Lord our God. Normally, in our morning service on Mothering Sunday, we distribute little poses to the children to give to their mums and indeed to give to all the ladies in the congregation. That's clearly not possible today, but Jill and Margaret have kindly made a number of lovely little poses like this. Beautiful poses that smell very nice as well. And these were distributed to our children and young people yesterday to give to their mothers. So thanks to Margaret and to Jill and to all those who delivered the poses to the children. Today then is a day to remember and to thank those who have mothered us and cared for us. The pandemic regulations clearly severely restrict our celebrations but we can still listen to the voice of God's caring love for us all, for our families, for our friends, as we join together in our service this morning. A short responsive prayer to begin our service. We praise you, our God, for all mothers who have loved and laughed and laboured as they cared for their children. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for all mothers who have wept in sorrow and joy for their children. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for Jesus, born of a woman and nurtured in her love. And for Mary, a reminder of your patient, waiting love. Blessed be God forever. Yes, and we've so much to praise God for and to thank him for, and we do this now by singing our first hymn. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices.
collect for Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bring together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We come now to our time of confession. And so in a moment of quiet, let us call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others, and our failure to love as Christ has loved us. A moment of quiet reflection. Your love gives us life, yet we fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good, yet we seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. Yet we ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthy lamenting our sins and acknowledging your, our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Us, How Vast Beyond All Measure, That He Should Give His Only Son to Make a Wretch His Treasure. The three verses of this Stuart Townsend song sum up the remarkable depth of God's love for each one of us. We sing this together.
come now to the Apostles' Creed. The creeds remind us of the faith of the Church universal, beyond borders and beyond time. Saying the Creed reminds us that even when we are separated and dispersed, we share our faith and our prayers with Christians throughout the world and throughout the centuries. And so, let us say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. In our online services we've instituted occasional interviews with people from within the Church Fellowship to see how they're managing during the pandemic. Today I'm talking with Liz, so let's hear what she had to say. Well, Liz, it's lovely to see you on this uh, mothering Sunday morning. It's great <laughs> that you've uh, agreed to have this short chat with me. So let's kick off and tell me briefly how you are, what you've been doing during this period of repeated lockdowns. Um, well, I'm, I'm well, thank you very much. Uh, certainly physically, but I, th I think like a few other people have said that um, mentally it's all getting a little bit wearying now the sort of continued having to speak to people on screens and things like that um, during all the repeated lockdowns or during the last year really I w I've been thinking um, that I'm still wearing this most of the same hats that I was wearing but I would say that they're probably all at a slightly different angle <laughs> uh -huh. um, so I'm st I'm still obviously um, a mum and uh, a wife and mother at home looking after my house, feeding my children who have been here constantly um, <laughs> during the last year instead of flipping off to work or um, school um, out to friends for tea. There's always the same number of people at the table. So that's something that's changed. Um, I've been continuing my job as a uh, church administrator um, with some changes, uh, there's not been as much work, but uh, what what I've done, I've mostly done from the school rooms because I'm there on my own and I walk there. I don't need to go on public transport, obviously. Um, my other hat is a Sunday school leader. We've tried to keep the Sunday school going, uh, coordinating it as well. Um, we've tried to keep it going in whatever way we can, mostly by Zoom, but also um, by delivering little things to the children and uh sometimes we started off by doing it online uh sorry uh by printing by printing uh, things to send out online and now we actually have face to face a lot with the children but on zoom uh, and the same with brownies i've been exactly the same with brownies that we uh have been doing it all on zoom so that face to face contact's gone um i i, I don't have a god hat though god's my umbrella over all the hats good, good. <laughs> Well, that's good. Yeah. Yes, I think probably we're all feeling a little bit fatigued. Some days yeah. are better than others, aren't they? But it, uh, uh, yeah. it wouldn't be human not to feel fatigued, although we've got to recognise the many blessings that God gives us even amidst this. But before what? I get into sermon mode, let's have the second question. Which, <laughs> what on the one hand are your major concerns and on the other hand, your major hopes in these challenging times? Um. I think m major concerns are, are possibly for uh, children, my own children um, and my grandchildren, um, also um, the children who 
who look after and see at Sunday school, um, that not that they will not catch up on the education, which is a popular media view, and I don't really believe that that's not possible. I think I think the children will will the education side will be fine, but that they will um, their relationships won't suffer, that they won't have got sort of so used to everything at home and just relating to family, that they will be able to sort of go out and and, and socialise quite normally and everything will get back together. But also for older people who I think are feeling the same. Yeah. Um, I'm very fortunate, obviously, that I've been able to still turn up to work um, on the two or three days a week um, and find things to do and there have been plenty for me to do. But I know that there are a lot of people who the days are very much the same at the moment and particularly people who live on their own or who live with people who are um, perhaps um, have had some sort of illness and, and, and they can't have that social interaction and support in the same way that they could. So I just hope and pray that they will get the support that they need. Good. Yeah. Thanks. What, um, in what ways has your Christian faith been affected during this rather strange year, as the Archbishop of Canterbury put it? Um, I think that um, I've something that something that was quite poignant for me was that just before the lockdowns came, we knew it was coming, but we obviously got absolutely no idea what it was going to be like. We had the activate meeting at the school rooms which was basically uh, for women a day for women um, it was a strange day where we all had to keep going and washing our hands and we'd got no idea what was coming but the main story or the main message that hit home for me then was the story of um, Elijah and Elisha and the widow woman who had the said she hadn't got anything except this jar uh, for, he told her to go and get as many jars as she could and fill them with oil and you know the story then and the message then was work with what you've got and that has kept coming into my head through all situations through this uh the series of lockdowns i suppose um you know we we, we can't all do the same thing um we can't do a lot at the moment but what we can do let's do it so i mean i've got access obviously computer printers phone um i can do what i can do <laughs> Um, so that's that's a little bit of of what it's been of what God's been sort of saying to me. But um, other things that have been good has been the my the support that I've got from meeting together with my house group every week. Uh, we've done that on WhatsApp, and also that um, from the growing families WhatsApp group, we've we've received sort of prayers and uh, pointers to readings and songs and things that other people have put on there and just generally managed to help to encourage each other as well as praying for each other when times of need so they've they've been really good good things yeah good that sounds great where in particular do you see God working in your life and what to conclude this uh, brief interview what would you especially <laughs> like us to pray for for you in the days ahead um i see uh, that god has been trying to teach me to slow down he's been trying to teach me um to be patient and that sometimes his answers to prayers are yes sometimes they're no and sometimes they're wait which i always knew but now i'm a little more convinced that that we have to do a lot more waiting um, and he's, um, the things to pray for me, um, generally for society, um, obviously I'd like to pray that, you know, for the vaccinations and that we will all learn the things that have been good, uh, during lockdown. So there's been things like obviously the improvements in the environment, ways of communicating that don't involve people traveling all over the place although zoom meetings and things are very irritating sometimes it's actually an advantage and hopefully we can cut down a lot of traveling and things in future by using things and make things more available to people like the online services 
Uh, for me personally, I think over the next few weeks and months, as hopefully we get back to normal, um, I'd like to pray for um, you to pray for me for prioritising things, really, I think. Um, I, w I don't think that I've probably done everything that I should have done in the last year, as in good intentions. So I'll perhaps try to do a few more things now. But I think, priori think prioritising and just generally getting things back on, on some sort of normal is the thing that I would like to, to pray for. But Good, uh, Good. well, that's great. And <laughs> thanks, Liz, for speaking so openly about the challenges and the opportunities and the encouragements that a time like this provides. And thanks above all for all that you do and do so willingly to enable God's work in this parish to continue and to flourish. So thanks very oh, much. Thank it's my uh, my privilege actually to to do that for you all. Thank you. Yes, once again, Liz, thanks very much indeed. And now Lindsay and Steve Thomason are going to lead us in our prayers and read our passage of scripture from Mark chapter 12, after which Rob will speak to us on today's theme, the greatest commandment. In the New Testament, Paul, Silas and Timothy write to the Church of the Thessalonians with final instructions. In chapter 5 and verse 18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The same applies for us today, so let's pray with thanks. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the world you have made the beauty of a tropical island, a lush rainforest, a sparkling glacier, the deep oceans and the many and varied amazing animals and bird life. Help us, we pray, to look after what we have and not to destroy. Give wisdom, Lord, and bold actions that will be delivered to all our world leaders. Thank you for conferences like the United Nations Climate Conference in November. Today we celebrate Mother's Day. Heavenly Father, thank you for all mothers, for their time and dedication, care and love, multitasking abilities and encouragement. Whether you have a great relationship with your mum, have lost touch, have struggled to see her over the last year, or dealing with grief, we give thanks for them today, for bringing us into the world and for God's work in our lives. Thank you also for those organisations that support mothers through difficult times. A Mother's Union prayer for today. Dear Jesus, we thank you for mothers everywhere for all who care for us day by day. Let us not forget that you were a child and your mother was Mary. We say thank you for mums across the world and in our country too. Although we may not say it, we think you are the best. So let us give grateful thanks and let our voices be heard for all the mums and grannies on this very special day. Amen. Throughout the current pandemic, we have seen many examples of good neighbourliness in our own village, country and throughout the world. Even good news in the media. Our reading today talks of loving our neighbours as ourselves. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the love you showed us by your saving grace on the cross and through your resurrection. Help us, we pray, to love you with all our heart, with all our understanding and with all our strength. So in turn, we will love our neighbours as ourselves. As we begin to slowly unlock society and hopefully get back to some normality, we pray that all society will continue to look out for others, encourage and turn to you as saviour of the world. Amen. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. Thank you for the good rollout of the vaccines. 
but with rising numbers of COVID-19 cases around us. Help us all to be vigilant and keep following the guidance and laws to keep infections low. Thank you that we can join together as a church online to hear your word and sing your praises or try to sing your praises at home and encourage one another by the phone, email, social media or a brief conversation across the street. We are mindful that some are struggling at the moment with ill health or recently bereaved. We give thanks for those who are caring for Brian Page and Nigel Gilmore and pray that both of them will know you close to them at this time. We give thanks for the life of Penny Rowe and for the love she had shown to many in this village and wider afield. We pray for Sam, Wayne and Jeremy, their children and the wider family as they mourn the loss of Penny. Let's join together wherever we are to conclude our prayers with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is taken from Mark chapter 12 and reading from verses 28 to 34. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbour as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I thought this morning I'd uh, bring out the uh, Mother's Union banner. And um, just as a reminder, as it's uh, Mothering Sunday, and uh, to recognise and give thanks for the work of uh, mums, uh, their selfless service uh, for all of us over all the years and just have that there over my shoulder uh, as a reminder um, that Jesus himself um, had a mother who looked after him and selflessly served him as he grew up. Um, as Mothering Sunday comes round again, it's been widely reported what a tough year it has been for mums, especially those with young children. So many of the usual support structures uh, have been closed and then uh, they've been having to face uh, leading homeschooling um, at home themselves. Um, we interviewed one of our younger mums just a few weeks ago and she was saying that the only time she could find space for herself was on the drive to the supermarket uh, once a week. Well, alongside uh, all of these pressures that there have been uh, around all of us in different ways uh, during this past year, there's been a huge growth in advice about how to live well. And there's been courses, uh, exercise programs, diets, techniques to attend to our well-being. And that desire to live well um, is, is nothing new. 
when the ancient Israelites were coming out of slavery in Egypt and uh, about to enter the promised land, and they gathered before Moses, and Moses brought the word of the Lord uh, to them. Um, and living well, knowing how to live well, was going to be at the very heart of how they settled in the promised land. The Lord said, Hear, Israel, and be careful to obey, so that it may go well with you and enjoy long life. Well, isn't that what we all want? So what were they to obey? Well, the Lord gave them the Ten Commandments as a framework for living well. But, but as they face the daily practicalities of life, of course there's the question, well, what do they mean in this situation or that situation? And so these, these ten were developed into many, many commands to deal with all the particularities of what daily life threw up. By the time of Jesus, the teachers of the law reckoned that there were 613 separate commandments in the book of Moses. Now with such a plethora of detail about what it is and how it is to live well, it was a perfectly legitimate quest to establish what lay at the very heart of this. What is the most important commandment for us if we are to live well? Well, in our passage today, we see that while Jesus has been teaching and debating um, with the teachers of the law and the Pharisees and the chief priests in the temple courts, uh, one of these teachers of the law had been impressed with how Jesus had answered some of the questions that he had been asked, brings this very question to him. Of all the commandments, which is the greatest? Or as we might frame uh, the, effectively the same question today, what, what is the key to living well? Well, how does Jesus answer? And we see that in his answer, living well begins with God. Jesus' answer begins with a statement about God rather than a command. In doing so, he, he actually follows the pattern that was there in the introduction to the uh, Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. They again begin with this statement about God as being the only God, your God. Uh, it's really important for us to recognise this, because in seeking to know how to live well, it immediately takes us to look outside of ourselves rather than inwards, to get our focus in the right place, Jesus is teaching that we will never learn to live well by focusing in on ourselves and what we have to do. When we look solely within, we, we see ourselves as a biochemical entity. Uh, as the atheist professor Richard Dawkins put it, a survival machine for genes, a random coalescence of biochemistry that exists for a while before dissolving into eternal insignificance of the universal chemical soup. But when we look outside of ourselves to God, we see ourselves as the pinnacle of his creation, the object of his love, of such value that the Lord Jesus himself gave his life for us on the cross to fit us for eternity with him. Now, however the world, life, the pandemic may treat us, uh, these truths about God that we see when we look out of ourselves to him are a given. They give us security, they give us an anchor, and they liberate us from the uh, impulse to look inwards to seek meaning, purpose and value. There's nothing I can do. No pursuit of well-being can give me greater dignity, value and love than is already ours through faith in Jesus Christ. And this frees us uh, to, to look out, for, sorry, frees us from, from looking out for ourselves instead to love God and our neighbour well-being, living well, whatever you want to call it, it begins with God. So the first essential commandment then follows from this statement about God. 
And that first essential commandment is to love God with the whole of our being. Jesus mentions all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. This covers every aspect of our existence, our feelings, our wills, our thinking, our energy. It is an expression of a total life commitment uh, to serving and loving this one God made known to us in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now for the ancient Israelites, uh, to whom this commandment was first given, as they went into the promised land, there were plenty of distractions, um, most especially the very visible pagan celebrations of fertility, wealth and power, focused at uh, that time on the image of the bull. Now, we may not have uh, idols uh, casting gold or silver of a bull to distract us, but the idolatrous distractions and seductions of sexuality, wealth and power are as ever-present and enticing in our age. However, the embrace of these idols does not lead us to live well. We in the West, who have the most unfettered access to the riches and delights that they offer, are beset by an epidemic of anxiety and poor mental health, not by living well. And I can't help but wonder whether people bearing their souls to complete strangers through all manner of social media and other outlets to elicit sympathy and public endorsement of themselves is not a symptom of our failure to love God, to love him first, to find our identity and our acceptance and our value in him. God, our creator, knows what is best for us and how our lives are designed to flourish when he commands us to a wholehearted commitment of love to him with all of our energy, thinking, feeling and will. And that then liberates us in turn to love your neighbour as yourself. It is God's loving will for us to find such absolute security in him that, 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 that it then liberates us for this selfless love of our neighbour. And isn't that exactly the example that Jesus uh, set before us? Uh, his devotion to his father his father's will, his love of his father, uh, before all things, was the very grounds of his selfless love and self-giving of himself to, to us as his neighbours. Now, I've occasionally heard it said that what this command, love your, love your neighbour as yourself, really means and teaches is that in order to love our neighbour as ourselves, we must first learn to love ourselves. Now, can I say that is a travesty of what Jesus is teaching here. Yes, God wants us to know that we are loved by an infinite love. But that assurance comes from outside of ourselves, from God's action in Jesus Christ, not from looking within what Jesus is saying here in telling us to love our neighbours as ourselves is recognising that um, the, the fallen human heart instinctively looks to serve itself. But that we are called to direct that instead, that love of self, to loving our neighbour. That is what will enable us to live well, to flourish in the world for which God has made us. It's the opposite of looking after number one. And it is right that especially on this day, uh, we celebrate and give thanks for the selfless love that we have received from our own mothers. Now in response to Jesus' reply to this teacher of the law, um, he, he presumes that as a teacher of the law, well-trained, well-taught and so on, he was the expert and that Jesus, not having been to the local Pharisee school, was a novice, and so he rather patronisingly commends Jesus for a good answer 
and endorses what Jesus has said. Yeah, well answered, Jesus. Yeah, I think you probably got that right. <laughs> Isn't that astonishingly patronizing to say to the very Son of God? It is very significant that this conversation took place in the temple courts. You can imagine the noise, the bustle, the busyness of the whole temple sacrificial system taking place around Jesus and this man as they have this conversation. And so in concluding, he agrees with Jesus that to love God, to recognise there is one God and to love him first of all and to love our neighbour as ourself is way more important than all this kerfuffle going on around them in the temple, the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. And for us, now Jesus has made his sacrifice once for all on the cross for the sins of the whole world, then that is even more true than it was for that man back then. And so Jesus acknowledges that this man in his understanding of things is not far from the kingdom of God. I wonder, are you? Have you come to understand that there is one God and that to know him and to love him and from the overflow of that security to love our neighbour as ourself is the very heart of what it is to live well in God's world, in God's kingdom. So for us, as we head into a new week, as we seek to live well in the circumstances that face our lives today, let us first and foremost acknowledge the one true God and seek and love him. And from the absolute security that that gives us, live our lives in ways that overflow in love and service to others. As Jesus said, of all the commandments, this is the most important one. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you that you, together with your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, are the one true God, and there is no other. And we thank you for everything that you are and everything that you have done uh, for us. We thank you for the immense uh, dignity and value that puts on each one of our lives. We thank you for the lavish outpouring of your love, even when we were your enemies, and the gift of your Holy Spirit to make your home amongst us and dwell within us. Lord, we pray that uh, day by day, uh, as we wake, we may lift our eyes to you and love you with all of our being. And then we pray that you will open our eyes to the lives of those around us, that we may overflow in love to them too. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Many thanks, Rob. We come now to our final hymn. Father of all, whose laws have stood as signposts for our earthly good. It was written by a clergyman, David Mowbray, whose hymn writing began in 1978 while on a month-long clergy conference at Windsor Castle. It has a really super refrain. Give us Christ's love, its depth and length, its heart and soul and mind and strength. We sing this together.
parochial church council met last week to plan the way ahead in response to the government's roadmap. The request from the civic and health authorities for places of worship to remain closed for a few more weeks. A letter from the bishop requesting us to be mindful not just of ourselves, but to act in solidarity with the more disadvantaged communities. And the latest data showing Rothley Mount Sorrel currently having a higher infection rate than the average for the wider city and county. In the light of this, it's with deep sadness that once again we won't be able to meet together in the church building over Easter. The church building will be open for private prayer from the 12th of April and for said services from the 17th of May in time for Pentecost. We will review this decision after the APCM, our annual meeting, which will be held on Zoom on Sunday the 18th of April, such that if there is any significant change in the advice and data, we can, if necessary, bring forward the date the building can be open for worship. After such a long time as a church family, we are rightly impatient to be able to meet together and to welcome the wider community. And we very much pray that until we can, our online service will continue to point people to Jesus and to encourage them in their faith. There is a great deal of loneliness fatigue and weariness in our wider community. And so, at the end of this service, why not pick up the telephone or text or utilise social media to make contact with someone either from the fellowship or from the wider community, someone perhaps who lives near us? Such calls are a source of great encouragement and hope. A closing prayer. The love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and those whom we love from this day forward, for evermore. Amen.